You might have a disc herniation if you have these three signs. And if you do have these three signs, don't worry. We're gonna show you how to fix it. We meet with around 150 people a week with disc issues all around the world online. And so we get to hear firsthand exactly the most common symptoms that these type of individuals are struggling with. And so we're gonna tell you exactly what helps them today and what we structure in our program to help people all around the world fully resolve disc herniations. My name is Dr. Grant Elliott, founder of Rehab Fix, and we have helped thousands of people around the world fully recover from low back pain, disc herniation, and sciatica. And in this episode, number 148 of the Low Back Pain Podcast, I'm gonna show you three signs to determine if you have a disc herniation or not and how you can fix it. Real quick, if you have not joined my private Facebook group yet, you need to do so. It is called Rehab Fix Low Back Program. And immediately upon joining, you will receive our free step-by-step -step Sadica guide. This is the same process that we have taken thousands of our clients through around the world to identify exactly how to fix their sciatica and ultimately become pain-free through our one-on-one -on -one coaching program. In this group, you will be able to see our clients and what they're doing for success and additional resources and more free guides. So if you're serious about fixing your back, you need to join this group, Rehab Fix Low Back Program. See you soon. Let's get right into it. The first sign that you might have noticed is that when you cough or sneeze, man, that back pain or that leg pain significantly increases. It is so aggravating. It'll take your knees out from under you. It'll make your knees buckle. It will make you feel like you've thrown your back out. These are the things that we hear every single day, coughing or sneezing, or even sometimes going to the bathroom a little bit too hard. Or you know, Those things can trigger these things too. This is really commonly associated with lumbar disc herniations. Why is that? Why does coughing or sneezing increase your back pain or your disc pain? I want you to imagine that your spine is here, or if you're an audio listener, just imagine you see your spine, okay? Primary disc herniations are posterior disc herniations. They're pushing out the back side of the spine. When we cough or when we sneeze or when we bear down, if we're going to the restroom, it increases what's called intra-abdominal pressure. Intra-abdominal pressure is an increase in pressure in your abdominal cavity. Your abdominal cavity is in the front of your spine. So the disc herniation is on the back side of your spine and your abdominal cavity is on the front of your spine. When you cough or sneeze, the pressure in your abdominal cavity significantly increases. And what that does is it's like a balloon. It's like you're squeezing the front of the balloon and it's pushing pressure, that abdominal cavity, is pushing pressure into the front of the spine. And that pressure into the front of the spine is pushing pressure against the disc, or it is causing your spine to go into a flex position, which increases disc pressure. And then that force is transferring through, and it's increasing pressure on the back side of that disc where that injury might be. That is the mechanism for why sneezing or coughing increases pain. So increased intra-abdominal pressure in the front of the spine that hits the front of the spine, transfers to the back side of the spine where that disc is, and that's what increases the pain. Really, really common, especially if you feel that increase your sciatica down the leg, that it's, it's definitely more indicated that that is a disc herniation that you're experiencing, but really common symptoms. Don't let this worry you. I'll sweat off my sack. Many people want advice on, hey, when I'm coughing or sneezing, what position should I be in? We actually advise that they try to sit as tall as they possibly can, or even lean forward on something to, to brace themselves on like a desk or on a couch. Um, and to try to keep their bodies neutral or, or even in extension if possible to try to avoid that aggressive flexion moment that, that tends to help people just controlling their position, bracing, trying to stiffen their spine. And even like right now, I'm sitting at my desk, I can push my arms into the desk and I can kind of brace myself uh, so that when I sneeze, I'm already tensed. That tends to help these individuals. Hey, real quick, if you're watching this video and you're resonating with the things that I'm saying and you're ready to be pain-free, just click the link below and you can schedule a call personally with my team so we can meet with you go over your current situation and figure out what you're missing and help you develop a game plan so that you can finally become pain-free. This is for serious people only, so click the link if you are ready to go. Back to the show. The second sign is pain or increased leg symptoms when you're putting your socks and shoes. Now, why am I saying putting on your socks and shoes? It's because it very closely resembles a particular diagnostic test called the slumps test. The slumps test is when you're a sitting 
you're leaning forward, chin down to your chest, and you're straightening your leg. Almost looks like a hamstring stretch. This test is highly sensitive for disc herniations that are causing impingement on a nerve and causing sciatica to shoot down the leg. Now, when you try to put on your socks and shoes, it closely resembles this test. It's the closest thing to everyday life that you're doing that is very closely related to this test. So if you notice when you're trying to put on one leg's particular sock or shoe, one leg is remain really tight, really hard to stick that leg out or to bend over towards that particular leg. And you're feeling an increase in back pain or increase in leg pain when you do that. Or if you're trying to, you know, cross that leg over and one side's really tight, but the other is not as tight, then very likely that's coming from a disc issue. One tip for this, instead of bringing your body to your foot, when you're trying to do these things, bring your foot to your body, stand up and put your foot on a bench of sorts so that your foot is elevated and then try to hinge forward to tie your shoes. This tends to be helpful for these individuals so they're not kind of awkwardly bending forward and increasing that pressure on the disc or increasing that nerve tension. Nice little modification there. Now the last test or sign and symptom rather is you feel 80 years old standing up. If you've been sitting for a long period and then you go to stand up straight and it takes you like three, five seconds to get up straight, you're going, oh, standing up. And then it even takes you a few steps before you can get straight. This is really commonly associated with disc issues as well, because that disc that's pushing backwards is obstructing your spine's movement. If you've been sitting for you know, multiple minutes, multiple hours, potentially that pressure on that disc will increase, 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 and will start to form an obstruction. And then when you go to stand up, you're pushing back on that obstruction and it's sensitive and it's also just blocking the motion of your spine. So it feels like it's hard to get up straight because it is being blocked or it is sensitive. As you take a few steps, starts to loosen up, you start to get up straight. You're like, okay, I'm good for now. But you know that if you go and sit down for a decent amount of time, it's going to happen again. Another one. This is really, really, really commonly associated with these types of disc issues. We hear this all the time. We hear this every single day. These are the easily the most common symptoms that we hear. Let's say you're listening to this or watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, I have all three of those things. Do not worry. Yes, you probably have a disc herniation, disc bulge, whatever you want to call it, but do not worry. Why should you not worry? Here's why you shouldn't worry because 97% of individuals with a lumbar disc herniation can recover without injections, without surgery, but with a proper rehab plan. And it just so happens, like I said, that we meet with about 150 people every single week with disc herniation. So I'm gonna give you just a couple quick tips today on what you can do about this because you can heal. You just need the right mindset and the right plan and the right guidance through that plan. This is literally what we do for our careers. Okay. So here's a really simple exercise for you. I'm going to make this so simple that you only need a couch. You only need a couch. Okay. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to get off the couch. You're going to turn around and lean on the couch. You're going to put your knees on the floor. You're going to rest your upper body on the couch. You're going to scoot your knees back a little bit. So there's a little bit of space between your chest and your knees. You're going to push your hips forward and down so that you're going into an arched position. Almost looks like an upward dog, like in yoga, but you're resting your upper body on an elevated surface in this situation, the couch. As you push your hips forward and down, I only want you to go as far as you can comfortably. Okay. We're not trying to push past the pain. We're trying to push nice and easy, just to the point of tension here. And then you're going to back off and bring the hips back up like you're in a flat tabletop position and then push them forward and down and then back up forward and down and back up repetitively each time kind of testing where, where you're at, how this feels, how deep you can go. Is that pain increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it staying the same? All these things will change whether we keep doing this or not. So you want to pay attention to these things. You should notice that it gets easier as you go. You should be able to go deeper as you go. And one pro tip is to make sure that you're keeping your lower back and your glutes totally relaxed as you do this. Totally relaxed. Do not flex your glutes. Do not flex your lower back. This is a very common motion that helps centralize disc herniations, take pressure off of them, reduce them, help them go back to where we want them to be and remove that obstruction away from the sensitive tissues, from the joints and from the nerve. This is 
really, really direct here. And this won't work for everybody, right? This won't work for everybody. This is a generic video I'm making, but it will work for majority of individuals. They will feel better with this. They will feel more mobility and they will feel less pain. So we worked on the lumbar spine with this simple motion using the couch. Now we're going to work on the thoracic spine or the mid back using the couch as well. Now, instead of resting your upper body on the couch and pushing your hips forward and down, now we're going to slide back a little bit and we're going to rest our arms on the couch, outstretched arms resting on the couch. And you're going to push your hips back and push your chest down this time, chest back and down. This is going to help mobilize your mid back and your upper back into extension. We're going to repeat this repetitively as well. Why are we wanting to mobilize the thoracic spine? or the mid back into extension, because many, many people with disc issues tend to have sedentary or flexion based lifestyles. Not everyone, but a lot of them. And so many individuals are restricted through this region of their spine, through their mid back. And if this area is restricted, it will increase compensation in your lower back. So then your lower back has to work overtime, has to do more and move more. And it's sensitive right now, has a disc issue. It doesn't want to do that. It doesn't want to pick up the slack for its friends upstairs. So we want them to be able to do their job too. So we want to mobilize this area to reduce compensation off of the lower back, which will take stress off the lower back. So that after you mobilize the lower back in the fashion that we discussed, when you free up the mid back too, it'll allow those effects in the lumbar spine to last longer. Because if you didn't mobilize your thoracic spine, then immediately, as soon as you go back to your normal life, maybe without a significant plan for this, that increased stress or that compensation will build faster in that low back again. But if you have the thoracic spine, it's friends upstairs cleared and doing their job, then they'll both be working in harmony and that increased stress will not go back to the low back as fast. So this will help your results last longer and provide a more cohesive approach throughout your spine mobility. Two really simple exercises, but they can provide a lot of relief. And here's something I want to make very, very clear. These will help reduce your pain temporarily. And the changes to the signs that I mentioned today, the coughing and sneezing, how you can brace your body and hold yourself to avoid that. When you're putting on your socks and shoes, elevating your foot so that you can kind of avoid that. I'm teaching you how to avoid these things so that you don't increase your pain, which is great. A lot of you are going to, you know, these are going to be miracle modifications for you. But remember, avoiding the pain is not fixing the pain. Avoiding the pain is not fixing the pain. You can modify your life. You can change your lifestyle. You can do less of this, less of that. Change the way you do this. Change the way you do that. And that's great if that's what's going to help you get through the day. But that's not fixing the issue. You need to address the root issue so you can get back to living your life at its fullest and do whatever you want, however you want, without worry. You should be able to cough and sneeze without worry. You should be able to put your socks and shoes on however you want in whatever position without worry. You should be able to stand up out of your chair and go walk and you know feel amazing no matter how long you've been sitting down. These are things you should be able to do and you shouldn't have to work around these all the time. And I don't want you to. That's not a way to live your life. Always modifying what you're doing, working around the pain here and there. No, you're wasting so much energy. You're wasting so much of your life that you could be living free. And you only have one life. One shot, one opportunity. To and I don't want you to live at modifying your life. That's not quality. I want you to have the highest quality of living. And we, once again, we talk with 150 people around that every single week with disc issues. And all we hear all day long is that people are getting, you know, quick fixes at the Cairo, quick fixes at the PT, or they're just showing how to modify their life, but they have no clear path on how to actually fix the disc. Cause remember 97% of them can recover. You just need the right plan. They're not being shown how to actually fix the disc. And then most importantly, how to get back to being bulletproof and doing the things they love how they get back in the gym, into more exercise, into higher intensity training, into their bike rides, into running, into sports. How do I transition back to those things so that this doesn't happen again? This is a key component that's missed all the time. And it's something that we strongly focus on and strongly emphasize with all of our clients is let's address the root issue, not just modify your life, centralize the disc, get that taken care of, get you out of pain, get your mobility back, and then guide you back to increasing load 
on your back. Let's get that disc adapted. Let's get it strong. Let's get your core strong. Let's get your spine stabilizer strong. Let's mobilize your hips. Let's strengthen your hips. Let's build you up again so that you can do whatever activity you want without worry and have a plan that'll last you the rest of your life. That's what it's all about. And if you want to figure out how that looks for you, then book a call with us, meet with us. Let us help you do this because your health in your life is worth it. Once again, be sure to join my Facebook group, Rehab Fix Low Back Program, so you can get additional exclusive content and our free Sataka guide immediately upon joining. If you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave a five-star rating and review so we can grow this podcast and help reach more individuals who deserve to get results, who feel like they're spinning their tires and getting frustrated in doing so. As always, move more, move in nature, move in the sun. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day. Tony Robbins there at the end. Oh.